Welcome back to the European World Championship Qualifier 2015 in Dublin, Ireland. I am joined again by Luke Withington, hey, Rob. Uh, who will be doing the strategy comedy comedy commentary. We'll get that also, in there. we'll get the we'll comedy get, in, we'll there get in there as well. <laughs> now, uh, this round we have got Gillian Van Sander playing Infernoid or Helian uh, against. Long Dao, who is playing your favourite deck? Well, yeah, he's, he's playing a variation of the deck we saw last round. Um, people have been talking a lot about this, calling it Turbo Towers. Turbo Towers. It's all about summoning the Apocryphal Towers. Um, about the alliteration. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. So we've been, we talked a lot about it last round, so I'm going to talk firstly a bit about uh, Gillian's deck and Infernoids and the way that Infernoids work. So a lot of, the, a lot of people are calling Infernoids um, the Dragon Rulers 2.0. Which is a bit strange, but so a lot yeah, of it makes sense. Yeah, lots and lots of banishing, lots of dumping everything into the graveyard. Yeah, so all of the small infernoid monsters can be special summoned from the hand by banishing one infernoid monster from the graveyard, and all of the big infernoid monsters can be special summoned from the hand or the graveyard by banishing two infernoid monsters or from three, the hand. Or three, if you're doing yeah. Anunku or Deveity. Yeah, the really really big ones. The I think they're like ten stars or something crazy like that. Kind of ridiculous, yeah. Yeah. So he's playing um, the Light Swan engine with it. Just the one Raiden, one Lila, one Eren. He's also playing Card Trooper, and two Charge of the Light Brigade. Eren, a pretty fantastic card. Yeah. Realistically. Very good against the Dijin Lock. Yes. Yeah. Which we've not actually seen much today. Uh, no, actually, I don't think we've seen it once. No. No, it hasn't been played today at all. Well, no. it's been probably been played. Oh well, yeah. just not on screen. Somewhere downstairs. <laughs> yeah. We've been having all the games downstairs. So it's very interesting because this deck relies quite a lot on milling cards, using the Light Swan engine, or using Reasoning. So it's quite an old card, Reasoning. I used to play that in my uh, Diamond Dude Turbo deck a very long time ago. So very you, long time uh, ago. Yeah, so you, it's, it's, it's a spell card, and you play it. Your opponent has to call a level, and then you keep milling cards until the... You keep sending cards from your deck to the graveyard. And when you find a monster that can be summoned... You normal summoned. Normal summoned, yeah. You can uh, you can summon that card if they got the level wrong. If they got it right, then it, it gets goes straight to the graveyard. Yep, so that also... Just uh, adjusting yeah. the microphone there. There we go. Yeah, there we go. So if it, basically that's all about the milling aspect, the sending the cards to the graveyard. And with the Infernoid monsters, because they can't be normal summoned, they just go straight past when when they're getting hit by reasoning. Yeah, and, and basically just fills your graveyard. Now he's also playing Spell yeah. Cancellor, which is a very very nice uh, card to, that I've not seen in forever, and yeah. I've not actually seen played either yeah. uh, in a while. So it'd be nice actually for it to see play. Now we had a bit of quick chat about Turbo Towers. It's essentially the same kind of build that we s we saw in previous yeah, rounds. Quite a lot more trap cards than uh, quite than a few more trap cards. Now we're, we'll actually see it in action now because I believe our players are actually ready. So yeah. if we could Let's go over, over to the, the table. table. We like I said that at the same time. That yeah. was, that was cool. We're we're in sync. We are in sync. Well, we're almost in sync. We're almost in sync. <laughs> <laughs> Here yeah. we are. So Long Dao piloting the Clifford deck on the left. Now let's uh, just quickly go through his hand. He's opened a Cephalopod, a Shell of Stealth, a Wavering Eyes, and I believe that was a Mind Crush. Yeah. And so immediately he's using Wavering Eyes, this new card that we've been talking about today. That's uh, kind of ridiculous. And there's an Antra, a Saitsamas, a uh, Lila, and two Galaxy Cyclones in Helian's deck. Uh, now, let's see where Long Dao is going with this. As you say, he's just used Wavering Eyes, which basically gives you several searches on your opening turn he's and sets you up completely ridiculously, doesn't it? He's not even let his, letting his opponent think about what's going on here. He's just... He, so he put both of those monsters that he opened with in his Pendulum Zones, played Wavering Eyes, which allowed him to search out the Scout, played Scout to get Monolith, Pendulum summoned those monsters, and then tributed them both for Stealth, which bounced the Scout back to his hand for allowing him another search. Sorry I went through that a bit quickly, but we're yeah, it, it was on, a quick we're moving turn. on quite quickly. Yeah. Uh, now, he has also now got his Recleate as well, so he's ready to just negate any effects that's happening. Yep. Now, he doesn't really know what's, uh, what Helian is actually playing there. So to boot here, we actually uh, we, we see him draw two cards in the end phase because Monolith was there when he tributed those clay monsters. And I believe he's got another Wavering Eyes and a Mind Crush now down. And that's uh, fantastic. Just gone from his hand there. Now, Galaxy Cyclone is now going to hit the field. Yep. Uh, so we'll one see of that. the new cards that have just come out. It can target a face down card, and then you can banish it from your graveyard to target a face up card. Really wow, so quite good against. Yeah, yeah he's before. actually just um, played both copies of Galaxy Cyclone from his from his hand there, and those are the only copies he plays in his entire deck. 
that's actually really lucky considering he's playing against Clifford. So he got really lucky there. So let's have a look at the rest of his hand here. So he's got Lila as well. Absolutely fantastic. So Scout's now gone. His options are very, very limited. Now, he, he, Hilian is still able to bring out that Sights of Mass if he really wants to there. Yep. He's actually ending the turn and allowing some cards to hit the graveyard with Lila. Uh, Long Dao sporting a pot of duality and another Wavering Eyes in his yep. hand. So we hear, we see him reading those cards, so he may not be too familiar with Infernoids. They're, they're not that popular at the moment. I disagree. They're very popular. It's just when you're coming to this level of play, you only expect to see the 6 slash 7 meta decks. Yeah. Yeah, well, some of these people have been taking this chance and going with these kind of less popular decks. Now, it looks like uh, there may have been a bit of a, an issue with the app because we are actually looking at, I believe that was, no, it was just the one Summoner's Art that was played there. Yeah. It did look like a second one under it, but that may have been the Wavering Eyes. So he's counting up the levels of uh, of these Inferno Monsters. So they actually have another restriction that I uh, didn't tell you about. When they are summoned, the, the prerequisite to them activating their effects is that the number of uh, levels of monsters on the field is less than 8, or equal to 8. Yes. So they they are quite restricted to the monsters they can summon, but it's really cool because they, they use cards that uh, don't have... Um, they don't have effects, which is part of that. So it's only effect monsters which get their levels counted. So you can play the likes of Gem Knight Pearl or Scrap Archfiend, very, very old synchro card, which are, are normal monsters, even though they are the Exceed and their synchro monsters, which allows you to summon more and more Infernoids. Now, Stealth has just taken out the Lila there. Yep. Uh, we're looking at a Wavering Eyes, a Lose One Turn, a Clifford Scout, and a Climate Change in hand. All three are now being set. Yep. Is that opponent's turn? Yeah, so let's see what he can do here. So his graveyard's reasonably filled up with stuff. So he might be able to do some stuff in the graveyard. Mm -hmm. Get some he's special summons in the game. Oh, and he's got his Attendel as well. Attendel can actually attack twice. And yep. also can attribute a monster in either player's turn to banish a card from the graveyard. Yeah. So another another cool effect of the Inferno monsters, all of the very small Inferno monsters contribute themselves during their opponent's turn, during yeah during your opponent's turn to banish a card from their graveyard. Um, the big Inferno monster, inf big Inferno monsters can tribute any monster to banish a card during either player's turn, and the even bigger Inferno monsters, the Deveity and the Arnunku, can be used in either player's turn as well to negate monster effects and spell and trap effects. Okay, so. He's tributing, I believe that was Pyramas. Pyramas, yeah. Which can bounce face down cards, if I'm correct. Yeah, so what he did here, he targeted the face down card with Pyramas and then used a Tondal to um, tribute it so that it was off the field and unaffected by that lose one turn. Um, I wasn't sure if that worked. I'm pretty sure that it would still be negated by lose one turn. Um, but it looks like that's going through. So, yeah, okay. Um, so, yeah, so the Atondal's just sat in defense mode now. Doesn't have an effect. Nope, it's kind of just sat doing nothing there, but it's defending his life points currently, so... Now, Atondal actually has zero defense as well. Yeah, not much use. No, but Sysimas is in there as well. Yeah. And I believe it can come out because Atondal is at a level 8. Yeah, very much so. That's, That's if he wants to do it. Sights of Mass, very, very powerful card. If it attacks at the end of the battle phase, if you're still alive, it banishes a card on your opponent's side of the field. Yeah, very powerful. Now, looking at Long Dao's hand, we've got a Clifford Shell, a Scout, and a Cephalopod. Yeah, that Scout was added by Wavering Eyes. By the looks of it. I think it's just explaining an effect there. Yeah. As to why it did what it did. Yeah. It looks like he may have activated the effect and then tributed it as the yeah, effect. Yeah, I think I think that's what he was trying to do, but I'm unsure whether that works with lose and turn. But we'll well, well isn't lose and turn on. just like skill drain that it's if it activates in the gra if it activates when it's in the graveyard because uh, it still activates its effect. It, it doesn't activate in the graveyard; it does activate on the field. It's it's similar to effect veil or more than skill drain. But anyway, we'll we'll continue as we are here, so we can see that Long Dao is just thinking about this uh, next move here, and he seems to have drawn a Clifford carrier. So he's got a pretty big hand. Yeah. Looks like we've, we've again Let's got two of the scales. Out. He's got nine and nine and nine. <laughs> and and has a one. one. He has two carriers. So he has got the potential to be able to 
Pendulum Zone. Of course, he's got his scout to be able to yeah. do that as well. So he can go get a monolith here. He's playing two monoliths. Let's have a quick check. See, yeah, so he's playing two monoliths. So he could go and get that as well. Pendulum Summon, then Tribute Summon and attack. Yeah, so um, he's he's the one that's on lower life points here, but Gillian still got a full 7,000 life points. And losing turns on the field, which means if Long Dao decides to tribute all those monsters, he. Uh, to Pendulum Summon them all, sorry, that. And there is exactly the namesake of the deck. Yeah, so here's Apocalypse Towers. Long Dao has got his towers. Yeah, so it has many, many effects. The the first one being that it's unaffected by s spell uh, and trap cards. <laughs> you don't. Okay. As soon as it hits the field, unfortunately, it's unaffected by monster effects at so a level lower than it, and it's infected by spell and trap cards. It has a huge attack. Unfortunately, which I don't believe anything in uh, in Hylian's deck actually can beat. There, there is no way that he can actually defeat it. No, I don't think there's any card whatsoever that can get rid of that. He has no card that's bigger than it. Nope. Not even in his side deck. No. Interestingly, think, um, he is running Gem Knight Pearl in his uh, side deck there, which is a normal Xyz monster, meaning that he, he can bring out big monsters and bring out more big monsters. Yeah, so that, that, nice. that and the Scrap Archfiend are the two normal monsters that you usually play in the extra deck of, the, of this deck. So let's have a quick look at the side decks of these two players. So what, what are they going to be putting in here? Right, so Hylian has a Chaos Hunter, uh, three Mystical Space Typhoons, he's got Mistake, which would kind of mess with the uh, whole Cliff Holt's ethics of searching. Yeah. Uh, Malevolent Catastrophe, that's actually quite nice to it's get rid of the uh, Pendulum Zones. Yeah, and the other Spell and Trap cards. Now, Spell Counselor. Yeah, very interesting. interesting. Uh, spell cards can't be activated, Yeah. So which means that there would be no, uh, no way to get out his... Pendulums. pendulums. Yeah, it's very interesting. So the, the reason this deck plays spell cancellor is because all you have to do is summon one of your special summon one of your inferno monsters, and then you contribute it for spell cancellor. Um, the only the only shame with playing spell cancellor in this particular matchup is that all of the cliff art monsters can just be normal summoned and attack into spell cancellor. But if he has some defense for it, then it could do really well. If I remember correctly, spell cancellor has twenty three hundred defense as well. So yeah. if he can get it out, protect it, and then put it in defense, he's got a very good chance. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it has bigger defense than it has at type points. Now let's have a look over at Long Dao. Yeah, so he's actually side decking quite a lot of um, quite a lot of things that we saw in the previous matchup. So he's he's got a load more of cli of the cliff art monsters: two shell, two disc, one um, monolith. Uh, two cephalopods, and then he's gone into the three into the void, and he's got two performer pals trampolinix as well. Now, interesting. I mean, he knows that he's going up against a deck that can be much quicker than his. Yeah. Is he going to go into the into the voids? We we may see Long Dao just, yeah, just put these into the voids in, put the trampolinix in, and just try and try and really use this uh, namesake of Turbo Towers and try and get it out as soon as possible. So. Um, Looks like we're just having uh, having some discussions while side decking now, so we'll see uh, we'll see what they decide to side deck. Now, as far as I'm aware, um, Ryan, uh, Ryan, our uh, app master, uh, be mutton chopped app master, uh, does actually know Hilian quite well as well because they are both from Belgium. Yeah, so they may just be having a quick chat about that. Yeah. So, uh, of course, he's not really talking about the deck or anything, but oh, he yeah, he, he kind of brought it to our attention that there was an Infernoid player that was going uh, X, X1. X1. So yeah. it was it was quite nice to see, you know, that he's doing really well. And then he was against Long Dao, yeah, that of all people. So it, it was just chance. all fell into place. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we're, we're, we're going to see what, what happens here. Long, Long Dao might just switch over into this seemingly really turbo kind of build of, of cliff arts and see where we go from there. So the, the, the idea behind turbo builds is that you just have one goal in your deck and just, just absolutely play lots of cards that will get you to that goal really quickly and with especially with Into the Void. So uh, that's a card that we've, we've not had much of a chance to show on the stream yet because it's just gone straight to the graveyard each time. But it's, uh, it allows you to draw one card whenever you have uh, four or more cards in your hand. And then at the end of the turn, you have to discard your whole hand. So would you say that Turbo Towers is definitely a glass cannon? In that if it oh, fires yeah, off, definitely. it definitely fires off. But if it doesn't, it breaks. Yeah, most definitely. Most definitely. It very much seems to be summon towers or don't do very well. So in the, in the difference here between 
Long Dao's deck list and uh, Marcelo's that we saw last round, Long Dao does seem to be playing a more kind of reasonably normal version of Clifford's in the in the main deck, but then in, in the, the side, side deck it actually for it. yeah. Hmm. So that's you know this is kind of a strange way of looking at it, but he's he's playing three wavering eyes in the main and uh, three pot of duality in the main as well. So it's he might not necessarily be looking for a turn one towers in the first few in in the first game, but in the second and third games he might be side decking out those pot of dualities into the and putting into the voids in to try and speed up that summoning of towers. Now he is. I should say, running a lot of traps there as well. Does that mean we yeah. think we might see a Royal Decree jump in on the Infernoid side? Um, yeah, oh, definitely. I think it, it'd be silly for him not to, but if um, if Long Dao decides to switch to this build where he just tries to get towers out as soon as possible, he might be taking a lot of these trap cards out. Might be just be keeping some core ones in, like Climate Change, Vanity's Emptiness, Recreate, Skill Drain, all of the nice one-offs. And then just going straight into it as fast as he can possibly go. Now it yeah. looks like we're going. Yeah, we're going into the into next, next game. game. There's the handshake. Yeah. Nice and bit let's of see what's in the hand. Sportsmanship there. Of course. As always. Yes, you definitely want to be sportsmanlike. Yeah. With so many people watching. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wouldn't want to be like really rude or anything if I had uh, a few thousand people watching yeah. me at any one time. Yeah. It's <laughs> a good point. We, we always see the handshake at the end, don't yeah. we? Don't we? Yeah. yeah. It's like if I'm well. sportsman-like and I don't come off as kind of like really rude or anything, you know? It's the best place for it. Yeah, it's the best place for it. Now, looking at Helian's hand, we've got an Antra, a Harmadic, a Reasoning, Monster Gate, and a Barrel from a Different Dimension. Um, uh, Long Dao is starting with Carrier Monolith, Into the Void, Wavering Eyes, and he's just played that Summoner's Art there. Wow. Uh, which is going to be, of course, getting him his scout. Um, I think Long Dao has towers here, by the looks of it. He can play, sure? play scout, get monolith. Uh, yeah, play scout, get monolith, or any other cliff art monster. Play wavering eyes, get another scout, get another cliff art monster, uh, which will be the towers. Then pendulum summon all of the cards in his hand, and then tribute them for towers. I think that's a possibility. I may have just been you going crazy. Ahead then. Of yourself, I may have been, may have been. Let's see if Long Dao sees uh, it. Yeah, earlier, earlier Ollie was calling me a fortune teller. I don't know what was going on there, but um, we'll see. We'll see how this goes. Um, if we look at Gillian's hand, actually, this this hand is really, really good for uh, for an Inferno player. Reasoning's actually a very, very powerful card. We were talking about that earlier. And Monster Gate is the same thing, but your opponent doesn't call any levels or anything. So yes, it's it literally just, you have to tribute to Monster to use it, though. Yeah. That's the major difference. Yeah. Which is quite easy when you're playing a deck that just special summons random things. Now, here you go. You, you've, tele you've telegraphed it perfectly there. Yeah, so... There's the towers. He's going straight for it. He sees yeah. exactly what you see. Yeah. And there's yeah. the second scout. Yeah, so I think scout um, scout monolith, possibly. He's going to get the second monolith because he had another one in hand. Or he already, oh, he already, he didn't use that monolith. He used the carrier instead from the in the first set of pendulum summons, uh, pendulum scales. Sorry. Um, so yeah, he still he's has a stealth in hand. So he's got a climate change by the look of it. Um, it was recreate, and then he's yeah he's going to be able to pendulum summon three from his hand and then trip them all for towers and turn one. Yeah. Now is Hillian actually just going to scoop here? Yeah, I think he just. I think he just. Do, loses. Would, he, would he try and see if he could do anything against that? Because I literally cannot see anything in here. There's, yeah, can. there's nothing. There's nothing at all. That's. It's three thousand attack. His towers is not. Uh, yeah, it it also makes it so that all of your opponent's special summon monsters we'll lose, lose five hundred attack, attack and well. defense. So yeah, that's. Yeah, I don't yeah. really, I don't know really what to say that th this this is exactly what we were expecting to see from this deck. Yep, and it's just done it, it immediately. Just did, yeah, exactly. And it was a climate change. Oh, it was climate change. Yep. Oh, he's, my bad. He's gonna he's done it so he can get to probably get his towers back. Yeah. If uh, if it <laughs> to, does to, go. To, to do it again. Yeah. If if it happens. Yeah. Uh, now here comes the. Ooh, and he's called it, and Lila is now out, and he's gonna get rid of the climate change. He's he's nice. yeah, yeah. long day. Obviously, just gonna. Yes. There's no reason not to play yeah, climate change just there. Just get it straight into hand. You can always pendulum summon from hand. So, yeah. So we see that Lila's use, and then straight into Monster Gate. Let's see Ooh, where that Deveity. takes us. Deveity is rather annoying, however. So we'll see if it uh, comes down. He's got a lot of cards to stop Deveity from being destroyed. Um, we're just keeping on going here, Rob. Yeah. Um, there goes the deck. Does he have another? Eren. Eren yeah. is Eren or Raiden is his oh, card trooper is the only other target. He is going all out. He's I still going. 
Okay, oh, so and there's um, another Lila. <laughs> right. Okay, so if uh, if uh, if if um, if Gillian here can see something that we can't, uh, he's got it in his graveyard, yes. ready to go. Yes, he has. So, <laughs> um, yeah, let's let's see what he can do here. Because and uh, there's long doubt just going. Uh, let me just check. Yeah, it's that. time to read the Infernity, uh, Infernity, Infernoid novel. That yes. is <laughs> the, that is the is graveyard. Gillian, Gillian's hand. Uh, graveyard even. I'm looking at Long Dow's hand. There's uh, not exactly a lack of cards in there. No, well, he just played that climate change, so... Yeah, I mean, he, that doesn't... Stuff in, which is interesting when you've got a deity in graveyard. Yeah, makes makes no real difference there because, you know, he just climate changed back all those cards. And I think that's deity that he's played, although it looks like one of the normal... Yeah, it does look like one of the... Um, one of the normal ones. Let's have a look. Yeah, one of the common cards. Of course, we don't have the graveyard on here, otherwise we'd be here all day. <laughs> we wouldn't Just have to scrolling down very, very slowly. Yeah. Uh, so let's see what it is that he has played when it loads up. Could be a sight mass. In which case, I don't know if he doesn't know that that won't affect yeah. it. So he's overlaying here. He's going to yeah, be able to. Mass. He's going to be able to make a rank seven monster. And he's played. That's uh, Mecha Phantom Beast Dracosac. Oh, okay. So Let's summon two tokens. He's just uh, having a go at a stall, I guess. Oh. Uh, yeah. Judge <laughs> like, yeah, please play those in separate zones. Yeah. Right. He's left his extra deck face up there. Yeah. That shouldn't be loud, but we'll probably catch it in a few seconds. So I, I still I don't know where he's going with this, to be honest. Um, he, he may see something that we don't. So I think that is one of the... Level tens. It's an Unku. Um, I don't. What about those towers? I, I don't understand how he's managed to kill towers here. They're both level ten. They are both level ten. So an Unku immediately destroys it. Okay. Wow. I wasn't. Yeah. I completely forgot about that. So. So he so actually has a good matchup against Turbo Towers. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Okay. So that's how he deals with that. Yeah. So where did he stop? Like, he could have possibly won last game, surely, if he'd have got the Anunku. Yeah, you'd have thought so. Wow, okay, well, that's been that's a strange turn of events. Um, wow, yeah, and long down now on 800 life points. So he could still get one scout search. He'd, he'd be dead yeah. if he decided to pay for that scout search. Yeah, it, as I said, <laughs> it's, it's fine as long as you don't have zero until you've paid the cost. Uh, can you pay a cost? You can't pay a cost. You can't pay a cost if you don't now. have it. No. Um, but we'll, we'll see what long down is here. I mean, this that just blew me away. I... I I completely forgot that that had the same number of levels as Towers. I thought Towers was like 11. And also, it can but negate, uh, I believe it's monster effects. Yeah, that one's Oh, no, it's Spell and Trap cards. Is that one Spell and Traps? I believe. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Uh, let's, let's get this on the street. And the tiny, tiny text. Yeah. That's tiny. I can't see it. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that text is really tiny. You guys can probably read it at home, but we can't read it. Um, okay, oh, yeah. yeah that, it's Spell and Trap. It's Spell and Trap. So, it's tribute to itself to... <laughs> Stop it! And now Anunku is available to come out next turn, so yeah. it doesn't really matter what he does. Yeah. And wow. So here is why Hilian has actually come to where he is now. Yeah. But it, but here we see um, he's able to complete a pendulum scale here. He might be able to put a lot Ooh, of defensive monsters stealth. on the board. Stealth, two stealths in hand and a carrier, and there is the wavering eyes as well. Yeah, but in all honesty, I don't think it's Mars because he's he's just going to be able to summon the uh, two. Like, is there any level four Inferno monsters? Uh, yeah, but they can only be summoned from hand. Ah, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, so I oh, it's a Harmadic, I believe, is it not? Harmadic no, three. three. Yeah, there's um, there is. Let's have a look here. We've got Petrulia is level four. And then I think that's it's it. Petrulia not level three because it's the opposite to Harmadic. three. I think Petrulia is Andrew's level. level two. Permace is level one. Yeah, I think Petrulia is level four because uh, Harmadic's level three. Okay. Yeah. Anyway. 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 So, yes, we we see here. We digress. We di yes, we digress. Um, we see here. Long Dao's really thinking about this. He's he's kind of struggling here. He he wasn't expecting his turbo towers to be, to to be turboed yeah. right into the graveyard. Yeah, I mean it's something. I just don't know if he's not gone up against many infernoid or yeah, possibly, or possibly. What? I mean, we didn't see uh, we didn't see that monster get put in the graveyard either. So maybe he just didn't see that monster be put in the graveyard either. Well, there's two more than likely two stealth going to come out this turn. So stealth carrier, yeah, bouncing cards. 
bounce those two. Well, that may have been a helix that just went. And that's not enough attack to win. Um, but oh, actually, it scout. is. Is that enough? It's 2 8, 2 8, 2 4. Yeah, uh, no, he pendulum summoned some of those stuffs. No, he just tribute. Oh, yeah, we tributed for once. That's 2 8, 1 8, that's 2 4. 5, 2. 6,000 in total. Uh, but he he can also. Um, he can exceed summon here because he doesn't have any cliff art monsters in his pendulum zone. So he could exceed summon into, uh, I think, level. Uh, rank 8, sorry. Um, well, so one of them will be level 4. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, there's no exceeds going. Yeah. Several pods here. come back down, wavering eyes. That inflicts 500. That's yes, it does. But that's still not a game. That's still 1,000 off, is it not? Yeah, it is. Unless we are, our calculations are out here. What does Cephalopod do when it's tributed? I'm, I'm trying to remember what Cephalopod does. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's something like um, when it's when it's summoned. Oh, okay, so he must have had enough there. Ah, okay, yeah. Um, disc increases the attack points of all of his monsters. By 300. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, correct. Yeah, so that must have been enough. Just, but wow, <laughs> Alien coming back. Yeah. That was really, really good. Yeah, we we weren't expecting that at all. No, I completely forgot that it was a level 10. And yes, we can actually see on the table, you guys can't see, that he did put his spell cancellers in there. He's yeah. just very publicly unsiding, and he put in another Lila. Yeah, that was expected. Uh, those were the three. And oh, he's just nice flipped them face down, because he's realized maybe... He there's a mystical space typhoon. Yeah. Uh, another mystical space typhoon. typhoon. And there's a third. Yeah. So, so lots um, of tr spell and trap removal and negation that he po popped in there. But still, Long Dao... Absolutely fantastic win. That that just showed that um, exactly what Turbo Towers yeah Turbo Towers was supposed to do. Last last round we were a bit disappointed. I was really sad that that we didn't get to see it make this really large combo work. But but then this time did. round we we got to see it. Yeah yeah it's absolutely That's fantastic. Amazing. That's amazing. Um, there's not much else to be said about that. We, not really. We, we were mean. a bit we were a bit shocked at the fact that we'd uh, we'd not seen that monster go to the graveyard uh, off reasoning. Well, I mean off Monster Gate. Sorry. He did send a lot of cards to the graveyard, so yeah, I just can't wait to uh, talk to Long Dao about this and yeah, it talk about his, his choices. So um, we're going to get an interview with him right yes. after this, aren't we? Uh, I'm, I will be back with an interview with Long Dao. Uh, we should be back after that. We'll be having a quick highlight reel yeah. uh, of what's going on, and I believe Matt Bell will be joining you. Yeah, he will. And uh, well, then we'll be back with the next round. See you soon. Yeah.